Hey everybody, and welcome to my Barred Owl short film documentary here. Um, it is Tuesday, January 14th. I am currently in this beautiful sanctuary uh, back here in the back part of my house where these owls hang out. And we currently have a male, what I think is the male barred owl in a tree quite a ways over here. I already got some photos and some video of it. And I came over here to film the introduction uh, to the documentary part of the video. So it was around November of 2018 that I realized, wow, I've got barred owls on the property, whether they, they, whether they nest here with their babies or whether they're passing through all the time or whatever it may be, they are around. So I had known that they were here for years, but I was never into photography and I'd hear the hoots and I'd think, oh, cool, you know, we got some owls out there, whatever. But, you know, now that I'm capable of doing this with them, um, I can't get enough of them. So I gathered uh, a bunch of video and photos of them throughout 2018 and I made my uh, Wildlife Series 3 video. I'll tag it right there if you haven't seen it, but the last few minutes of that is all owls on the property. So about a month ago, I decided that uh, I was gonna build them uh, a barred owl box and hang it in a tree where I see them often. So went online, got some specs for it, uh, made it all up. My dad helped me out, got this thing up in a tree, which was an absolute pain in the butt, by the way. Holy cow, I mean, this thing is heavy. It's got to be, you know, 20 feet off the ground or so. But the ultimate goal of this video is to get these barred owls to nest in that box and have babies, which I don't know. Hopefully it happens. They say that owls, like even a year in advance, will start to seek out their, their next spot where they're gonna lay their eggs and have their babies. I got this nest up in mid-December which is gonna give them a couple months to be around it and uh, take notice of it so <laughs> that is the goal but in the meantime I'm just gonna photograph them and take video of them uh, whenever I come back here for a walk and whenever I see them and if they don't end up mating in this box hopefully I will find their nest that they have somewhere out here, whether it's the top of a tree or an old hawk nest or whatever it may be. Hopefully I will be able to find that and just get a ton of video of the two adults around and the babies. That would be amazing. That is the goal. So thank you for watching and let's, uh, let's enjoy this journey. It is February 13th. It's about 12:15 in the afternoon and another crap, just awful day here in East Haddam, Connecticut. Feel like we haven't seen the sun in weeks. You can probably hear the raindrops on the microphone. I uh, got up this morning, did my usual thing and found two barred owls, which is awesome because I haven't seen the two of them together in like a month or five weeks or so. So I did my usual routine. I was setting up my camera to take a shot and son of a gun, I spooked one of the owls, which really ticks me off. I hate when that happens. So to back it up a couple days ago, the area that I built my barred owl box in, there was an owl in there as well. I tried to take a shot from the driveway and spook the dang owl, which oh, I hate that. So after thinking about it for a couple days, I think that this is the female owl that I've spooked because I'm pretty confident 
I'm pretty confident that I know the difference between the two now. The male owl lets me do whatever I want. So um, I let him be this morning, went out, did my uh, normal routines, came back home, went to look for the owls, and sure enough, they were in the same exact spot, and the male owl, pretty sure the male owl, was sitting like four, five, six feet off the ground, which gave me this unbelievable shot. I was actually just like uh, above the owl a little bit, shooting down on him. Must have taken like 100, 125 photos of this guy with the shutter on silent, of course, making no sound. And he just sat there and just did his thing and, and like totally unfazed by me, which is so cool. I think it's great. So got a couple gorgeous photographs of that guy, some beautiful video of it. Um, so. Uh, let me show you the owl box. I don't think I've showed you this yet. Um, let's go check it out. So there it is. There is the barred owl box right there. So we're in some kind of like swamp land in here. You can see that there is, um, I don't know if you can see it actually, but we have lots of water here, which if you're going to put a barred owl box out, you need to have, uh, it needs to be within 200 feet of water. I guess they like love the wetlands. So, um, you know, that doesn't look too tricky, but that thing right there took me four and a half hours to get up in that tree. Absolute pain in the butt. I built it and then I got the, uh, I built it, then I got the ladder out and I started to carry it up the tree. I said, how the heck am I gonna get this thing up here? I had to pulley it up and, and oh my God, it was just a disaster, but so happy to have it up there. But that's, uh, that's the owl box. March 22nd or March 23rd on kind of a snowy afternoon here in East Haddam. Uh, it's been a while since I've talked to the camera about the owls. Um, so just wanted to fill you in. We're actually deep into the coronavirus pandemic right now, which is just crazy and surreal. But uh, as far as owls go, uh, things have been super exciting. So I want to back it up about uh, two or three weeks. So it was the end of the day, I went out for an owl walk and I came across uh, one of the owls. It was very active. I thought it was the male owl, but in a second you'll know why it wasn't the male owl. Uh, it was very active. It was kind of going from tree to tree. I actually got super close to the owl. Um, not that I intended on it, but the owl had come to a tree that was close to me and just sat there for a little bit. Got some absolutely gorgeous photographs. Uh, so it was on a nice little broken branch perch. It jumped off into the wetlands, grabbed something to eat. I couldn't see what it was because it was, you know, all in the sticks and everything down there and it was getting pretty dark. So the owl finished up what it was eating and then it went to a branch that was a little higher up. So it's pretty dark at this point. I am just watching the owl through the camera, just sitting on this branch, and all of a sudden, the male owl comes out of nowhere, lands on its back, they do their thing for like two or three seconds, and then, boom, it was gone. So I actually watched these two owls mate, which was so cool. I've never seen anything like it. Um, I was able to grab these photos. These are horrible photos. It was, like I said, it was almost dark. The ISO is like 204,000 as high as it'll go on this camera but you can see that there's two owls there that are just um getting their freak on so this was awesome i was so excited to see this 
Several days later, I go out for an owl walk. I find one of the owls out there eating a chipmunk, which was cool because I don't see them eating that often. I bounced from tree to tree for a couple minutes and then all of a sudden poof, it took off right in the area that I hung the owl box. So I get, you know, get the lens lined up. I get a spot where I can see through the trees and then I took this photo, which this is the goal of this video. A terrible photo because you see owl butt, but its face is in the box that I built. So this was the first sign that I had that the owls were using the box. So, oh, this was the ultimate goal of this video. I'm fingers crossed that that female is in there uh, right now sitting on some eggs. Um, so about a week ago, Jill and I went out, took, a, took an owl walk and we head to the spot, we didn't see anything. We started to make our way back and then bam, all of a sudden I'm like, Jill, Jill, owl in the box, owl in the box. It happened so fast I couldn't get the camera up, but uh, one of the owls came out of the box, flew across and uh, landed in a tree with the other owl. And again, we start hearing, or not again, but we start hearing, oh, 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 and the two owls made it again. It was awesome. We both saw it. We both heard it. It was quite vocal. It was super cool, which was different from the last time. Uh, it wasn't vocal the first time. Um, and then they just kind of swooped around and, and did their thing for a couple minutes. And this is so cool to watch. It's so exciting. We both have the biggest smiles on our face. So, um, you know, to bring us up to, uh, to where I am today, last night I went out for a walk and um, I was looking in the area right where the box was. I didn't see anything. I started to proceed forward and then I, I did one of these like, whoa, the owl was, uh, oh man, it was like super close. So I it was able to uh, line myself up for a couple absolutely beautiful up close photos. I really think that these owls or at least one of these owls isn't phased by me at all. They, I don't approach them, I don't walk up to them, but when I see them, I stay where I'm at and stay very still, move very slow, and they just let me take these absolutely beautiful photos of them. So uh, things on the owl front are, uh, are good. Hopefully they're sitting on some, hopefully she's sitting on some eggs in there, and I guess that's all I can ask for right now. So I'm uh, gonna go hang out inside while all of this corona stuff is going on and uh, probably edit this video.
Hey everybody, it's Wednesday, May 27th. Uh, I'm in this sanctuary of the woods here where the barred owls hang out. Actually, right now the two babies are right above me, just sitting up there looking straight down at me. Um, I gotta, I gotta back up to yesterday, which was like a table turning day uh, for my barred owls here. So um, I got home from work at a decent hour. I was able to come out and take a walk in the woods. Sometimes I do photo and video jobs after my day job and I'm not able to get out here all the time, but boy, am I glad I did. I get into the woods and I find baby owl number one who was up over here, maybe about 20 feet off the ground, who looks like uh, just a young adult right now. He's got all of his feathers. There's no more puff on him. Um, just his face is really taking the shape of an adult barred owl. So they make this like screeching noise and I, I think they're just communicating with each other, letting each other know that they're around. So I'm hearing and watching this guy going, and then I'm hearing the other one calling from over here. <coughs> Probably don't need to make those sound effects, but whatever. Um, so I'm like, I oh, forget it. I'm going to leave this guy alone and I'm going to go find um, the uh, second baby who I call Omar. So I get to where Omar is and I'm looking up and I'm in absolute shock because I see another baby barred owl. So I have three baby barred owls now, which I had... I shouldn't say that I had no idea because that first video that I made when the two of them are popping out of the owl box, I had told several people that I think we've got a third because it looked like the two that were sticking their heads out were like getting pushed around a little bit. So I thought we had three for a little while. Then, you know, the two were out here for about two weeks now. I think it's exactly two weeks. And then yesterday, the freaking third one left the box and came out here and just started enjoying life outside of his box. So he is right up here right now. Uh, Omar is up here and we're calling the baby baby Olympus. Um, so they are just sitting right up there watching me right now. It doesn't get any better than this. So ecstatic. Um, let's have a good look at these two.
and good evening, everybody. It is uh, it is Thursday evening, July 4th, and I am out in the woods right now, as I have been a lot recently, with my uh, baby barred owls. Now, if you want to see something amazing, check this out. Don't know how good you're going to be able to see it, but we've got two baby bards right there. Um, Holy cow, this experience for me has been unbelievable. Um, yesterday, I did a lap through the woods and I found the oldest um, baby bard, who we call Ollie, just sitting on a branch. I spent about 45 minutes with him. I was about 20 feet away from him. I cannot believe this. I'm like 15 feet from these guys. They're so, can you hear them? They're so comfortable with me. So I spent uh, a bunch of time with Ollie yesterday, got some absolutely gorgeous photographs and some video of him. And I think it was the youngest barred owl who we call Olympus was right next to him. Uh, so I got some great footage of them. Uh, it's just been so, so wonderful. So I've been tracking these guys tonight. I actually got a couple unbelievable close-ups of them where they were just right next to each other. I gotta switch arms, this camera gets heavy. A couple unbelievable close-ups of them right next to each other. They were like, I don't know, they had their talons inter interlocked and they were like kissing each other. It was amazing. So I think they're really getting used to me. I think they're really getting comfortable with me. I always try to wear the same thing when I see them. I wear a, a black top. Uh, sometimes I have a hat on, sometimes I don't. But this experience of watching these babies grow up is even more than I could imagine. I never thought that I would get such amazing shots of these guys. Um, the third one is, <laughs> the third one is over here up high in the trees and I've been hearing them call back and forth uh, to mom and dad. Uh, mom and dad have been hooting in the background so maybe they'll come in and uh, drop off some food. And speaking of food, Last week, I was able to get some pretty good shots of the adults feeding these babies, um, which I'm going to show for you coming up here along with the shots from yesterday. But uh, you're, you're going to be able to tell from the tail that it was a baby opossum that was getting fed um, to these uh, to these baby bards. And you'll see one shot where the littlest guy just takes it and just swallows the whole thing down. So, oh my God, I just I can't get enough of these guys. They're amazing. Hey everybody, it is Tuesday evening, June 16th. I'm in the woods right now and I'm being a little quiet because 
can you see it? We've got uh, a baby bard up there. Um, I'm probably 25 feet away. You probably can't tell that from the camera. But uh, I came home from work tonight. Of course, I went for a walk, and there's one over there, and there's one right here. So I just wanted to share a couple of my thoughts as of late. Um, people have been asking me, how old do you think the owls are? So I saw them for the first time outside of the box on May 2nd. So if they spend four to five weeks in the box, and you that was about six weeks ago, you add that up to now, I'm thinking that they're anywhere between, you know, nine and 11 weeks, maybe the older one is 13 weeks maybe the younger one is nine but they're all somewhere in that range they're starting to look like you know owls now all their fur is gone they've got their feathers to be honest with you when they are alone i can't tell who's who anymore but when they're together i'm pretty sure that olympus the youngest guy and omar are still kind of attached at the hip they're they're next to each other a lot um i'm even gonna say that this guy is Olympus, the young one, and that Omar is just a few trees ahead of him in this area. Now, this is a different area that I've seen them in. I'm standing in swampland right now, total mud. My feet are submerged. And this is where I think a lot of their food comes from. I know a lot of their food comes from, but these owls are actually out here, I think, looking around with intentions. They're realizing that, <coughs> they're realizing that wow, this is where we get food, I see movement over here, I see frogs, I see mice, you know, this is where I'm going to be getting my food from. So, you know, when they're looking at things, they've got their eyes locked on it now. Just the other day, I was photographing Omar, the middle one, and he wouldn't make eye contact with me for minutes. I had to actually go over uh, to where he was looking, and I saw a squirrel go scurrying up a tree, and I was thinking to myself, wow, he might not have gone to attack that, but he realized that that's going to be my food someday. Um, so that covers the, about how old they are. Um, they've gotten really vocal recently. Um, hearing a lot of the, eh, eh, in the, he doesn't even care that I'm here. How cool is this? I'm um, hearing a lot of those noises in the morning and in the evening time. Now the other night, Jill and I were eating dinner and it was like 45 minutes of constant going back and forth. And then I edited video and then it got dark and they were nonstop. I mean, I open up my window at night right now and I yell out to them, Omar, Ali, uh, Olympus. And you know, I just try to get their attention and it sounds freaking crazy, but, uh, but that's what I do. I was just upstairs editing some video. My baby barge are in the driveway. They're going pretty crazy right now. So I wanted you to experience what it sounds like. They are screeching right now, so let's go get some audio. Hey, buddies! There's a beautiful thunderstorm right now. One of them is really close right here. Yeah, one of these is like very, very close. I wouldn't be surprised if the street light is lighting him up the slightest bit. Hey, buds. Hey, buddies! Uh, uh. Hey, bud, where are you? Uh. Oh, we see that lightning? <laughs> this guy's right here. Hey, buddy! Somebody had asked me, you know, what about the box situation? I'm like 100% sure right now that they are done with the box. Once they leave that box, I don't think they ever go back. I haven't seen them in it. I haven't even seen them like 
right around it. I see them around it, but not right around it. Um, but I am pretty sure the, the box is done. Coming up in this next segment right here, I'm gonna have this clip of what I think is Olympus uh, eating this, this mouse. I was actually filming just like this and I had a problem with the camera. It wouldn't keep focus on me. I kept going back and forth, so I'm re-recording this. But I was just packing up and I look at him and all of a sudden, I shouldn't say him because it could be a her, but I look at the owl, you know, in its talons, there's a, 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 a mouse in there that it looked like was dead for a little while and it just put this thing in its mouth and uh, 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 and take a look at the nictitating membrane. You'll notice that every time it like goes to swallow it down more, you're gonna see that nictitating membrane on the eye close up and protect the eyeball. So um, I think I've just about covered everything in the last couple weeks. They're flying around in longer distances now. Oh, I've actually been seeing them on the ground twice now. I've gone out in the morning and they've been on the ground. Uh, just like digging in the dirt and playing with the leaves. Um, I say it, I think, after every clip that I record, but it's just incredible. This has been an unbelievable experience. Um, through sharing this story on social media, I have uh, actually even sold a couple owl boxes. My dad and the neighbor decided that they were gonna build some, and we have two that are absolutely sold right now, and a third one that I'm 99% sure is sold. So no clue when this video is gonna be released or when I'm gonna put it out, but if you are in the need for an owl box and you see this, let us know, and my dad and my neighbor will custom make you one. So uh, let's see some more um, cool footage.
Good evening, everybody. I'm being, uh, well, evening right now as I'm filming this. I'm being a little bit quiet again because somebody is invading my space when I'm trying to film my documentary about them and they just keep getting in the way. Anyway, uh, it's Tuesday, no, it's Wednesday evening, June 26th, and I came out to hang out with my buds today and came across this one pretty quickly, so we've been hanging out for about a half an hour. He's probably wondering what the hell I'm doing. But uh, I wanted to fill you in on the past couple days. So Monday, I took the day off from work to catch up on computer work. Went out to the woods early and found all three barred owls very quickly. One was to my left that I was photographing and two were in a tree to the right. One of the two takes off and a couple minutes later, I thought it came flying back, flies right over my head, mouse in its mouth. I'm like, oh my God, they're hunting already. They're gonna be leaving here soon, this stinks. But it was mom or dad. Owl lands in a tree, the other baby bard comes flying back. So there's mom or dad, two baby bards in a tree. The one I'm concentrating on flies over very quickly and mom passed off the mouse to one of the baby bards that was already over there and uh, one of them had a nice little morning meal. Flew off very quickly. I mean, the whole transaction probably took less than 10 seconds. Monday evening, I go for a walk. Couldn't find my owls. I was kind of bummed out. So I decided that, um, I'm in the swamplands right now. I decided that I'm gonna cross the swamplands and see what I can come up with. So sure enough, I'm crossing the swamplands and I come across one of them that's just hanging out at eye level in the most perfect light, absolutely gorgeous, got some great photographs of it. So then I turn around to take a selfie with it and um, I, I see, oh my goodness, there's another one over there about 30 feet away. So I make my way over there and there was actually two of them hanging out there. So I got some photos, got some video of them. And then I said, you know what? <laughs> this is unbelievable. I said, I'm gonna try to you know, get in and see what I can get, get close to them. So I make my way under some branches, I get to where they are, and I sat in a circle with them six, seven feet away and just watched them for probably 20 minutes. They, they're watching, again, they're watching everything with intent. Like, I think they're looking at it thinking, wow, can I eat this? Uh, geez, could that fill my belly kind of thing? So it was an incredible experience, kind of like this right now. I mean, this thing does not care that I'm here. It's incredible. Um, so that's where I'm at with the bards. I've been having a blast and I hope you're enjoying this short film slash documentary. Let's see some more footage as they grow up. You look super cool. Buddy, what are you doing? I've never seen that position before. You're just hanging there with your tail over the branch, your wings over the branch, and your head is just resting on the branch. What are you doing, buddy? That's a very unique position. Buddy, what the heck are you doing? I have not seen an owl in that position before. There you go. That's a little better. Oh, you're clicking at me. Where are you going? Where are you going, bud? You gonna take off? You had enough time with me? You been here for a while? Oh, you just give me the cold shoulder. I see how it is.
Hello, everyone. Um, not only am I reporting from inside versus outside, where I usually do my dialogue, um, but I'm reporting from East Lyme as opposed to East Haddam, where I had filmed these owls. I still have the same outfit on, though, as you can see. For whatever reason, the last couple times that I was supposed to collect some audio and talk about the story, I didn't do it, probably because life was super busy, my business was cranking, Jill and I were in the end phases of buying this house that I'm at right now, so I'm just going to finish up from um, right in here. So the following clips that you're about to see were from the July 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th area, um, right in a, a week span right there. And I had spent a ton of time with these owls. I mean, sometimes maybe even, you know, hours at a time in, in just one night. And the owls had gotten extremely friendly at this point. Not that they were, not that they weren't before, but they started coming into like human territory. And in the following clips that you're about to see, you're going to see the owls um, hanging out on an Adirondack chair on the deck, hanging out on the umbrella on the deck. They're on like the roof line of the house, bird feeders hanging out on a tiki torch, hanging out in our garden, um, a blue bird box it was hanging out on, on the fence, on wood pile, hanging out on the sidewalk, um, even doing a number two on the backside of my dad's car. Uh, but probably the coolest clip that you'll see uh, is my father he had come out of the house and he was standing on the edge of the deck and he said, Frank, I'm going to see how close I can get to uh, one of these little guys. Uh, it was hanging out in, in the lawn. And uh, he didn't need to approach the owl. The owl approached him. It actually had flown up onto the deck and just sat right next to him for probably um, 15, 20, maybe 25 seconds. It was super cool. We both got such a thrill out of it. I'm like yelling but in a very quiet voice saying like dad don't move don't move I'm getting this whole thing on video uh, you'll also see one of the owls grabbing a bug out of the grass and, and eating this bug and then flying towards the camera which is which is always cool so um, was really awesome really unique to see them come out of the woods and kind of hang out in our territory
How cool were those clips? I, I get a, like, I still get the biggest kick uh, out of watching those. So the last time I saw these baby bards was on July 30th. That's the last uh, date that I have of the clips in my timeline here. And that's not because that they had left the area. It's just because that shortly after that, I had moved to East Lyme and just um, didn't have the time to go back and film them. Of course, I always asked my father, you know, Dad, do you see the owls? Do you hear the owls? Um, he didn't see them as much after that, but they had heard them for quite a while after that. So I do go visit my father. I always take a walk and I'm happy to report that like three, I mean, three quarters of the time I go there, uh, I take a walk and I look for the owls and I typically see the same owl in the same spot in the same tree on the same branch and I take uh, uh, a picture of it every time it's there. I'll share one with you right now from the last time I was there, although it was in a slightly different location, a little bit closer to the owl box. I've heard that if the owls have a successful breeding in the owl box, they will continue to use it for the rest of their lives. So I'm thinking last year was pretty successful and I'm really hoping that they do it again so that I can probably not document it like this, but I can always go over and take photos and take videos. Now, the real kicker here is the first night that, uh, sorry, not the first night, but the first week that Jill and I were in our new house here in East Lyme, we hear this rustling in the backyard and I go outside and I look and I thought that I might see a, a deer or maybe even a coyote or something, but didn't see anything. Sat back down to continue eating dinner and heard the same noise. I go outside, I start looking around, I, I look up in a tree and uh, sure as you know what, there's a barred owl sitting in the tree. So I ran inside, I grabbed my camera, I took this crappy photo, but just needed some kind of proof that uh, there are owls uh, in the area. So of course I built an owl box shortly after that. I hung it up in the woods. I dressed this one up pretty nice. I put some cedar shakes on it. So now I'm hoping that I can have um, Oscar and Olivia's family over in East Haddam, and I can have uh, the family over here in East Lyme. I think Jill gave them names, but at this very moment, uh, I forgot what they were. So I hear the owls often over here in East Lyme, although we haven't heard them since November 28th, and I know that because it's my birthday, but on two occasions, we've had people over here where I will go outside, I will play a YouTube clip through a Bluetooth speaker, Within 10 minutes, the owls will be sitting in the back trees and our guests have got to go out and see them. I'll put a flashlight on them or I'll put a light on them and the, the, the two couples, one being Jill's mom and dad and then the other couple being our friends Matt and Chelsea were just blown away that you know these owls came in and just you know had some vocalization with us. So that about ends my barred owl documentary. I think I covered everything that I wanted to in this video. I got some awesome video. Now I know that the owls are stagnant and just kind of sitting still a lot in this video, but um, they don't typically fly too much. And you know, if they were to fly and I had a camera on them, they're so hard to track. So, um, you know, I did uh, the best that I could do with that. If you've made it this far, holy crap, I'm impressed. I really appreciate you watching this video and please feel free to ask me any questions that you may have. Um, this was an experience of a lifetime. Hopefully it's gonna happen again. And I definitely won't ever forget it.